17. Yeah, my sister said, ears haven't heard yeah. the kind of blessings, the kind of blessings that's about to fall on me. Somebody prophesy to your situation and tell it right here. Said victory is here. Guess what it did, Faith City? It kicked your feet out the door. God started the thing, girl. Come on, Faith City. Get ready for overflow. Said, what you gonna do? Don't get ready to see. I can't get you to do this high. Somebody declare it, say I'm getting ready to see Said something I've never seen Something I've never seen Yeah, 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 yeah Put your hands in the air, yeah Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, people of God. Good morning, good morning. What's up, everybody? Okay, okay. Um, I'm, so, I'm so sorry, Pastor Tim. They're saying there's a Johnny Mac on the line for you? I, I don't know. call me right. Pull him up. Come on, pull him up. Jonathan, can't you see I'm busy? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Tim? Listen. What does he do, y'all? Said he take the pain. Take the pain away. Good morning. Hey, Lorraine, yeah. good morning. I will open up his eyes. Feel me up, God. Feel me up, God. Feel me up. Come on, you say. Feel me up. Say. Feel me up. Yeah. Feel me up. Yeah.
Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Peace and blessings to you. What's up, everybody? Peace and blessings to you on this, uh, what is this, Tuesday morning, Tuesday morning, January the 17th. Uh, I am blessing the Lord. I'm checking this internet for Instagram and can't seem to get on Instagram right now. So let's, we're going to, let's see if it's coming up now. Let's see if that worked. Good morning, everybody. It's uh, Tuesday, January the 17th. We are uh, heading for a new series of devotionals that we have uh, termed this this morning, No Need to Run Away. No Need to Run Away. No Need to Run Away. Write that, write that in the chat this morning, <laughs> even if you're not convinced yet. Uh, just write it in the chat anyway. No need to run away. No need, no need to run away away. Just type that in the chat by faith this morning. No need, no need. There is no need to run away. No need to run away. Today, I want to talk to you about treating yourself better, treating yourself better, treating yourself better. No need to run away. Just write that in the chat, write, write that in the chat by faith, write that in the chat this morning, everybody, write that in the chat. No need, no need, no need, no need to run, no need to run. Uh way. All right. We're going to talk about that this week. No need to run away. And we're, we're going to combat Chanel. We're going to, we're going to combat the, uh, this thing called escapism, escapism. We're going to, we're going to deal with the concept of escapism and escapism is simply that this need or this desire always to run away from reality, to to want to uh, desire to more than necessary, more than normal, to always seek uh, to be somewhere else, to be with other people, to always have yourself in another place, in another time, another situation that you you are unappreciative or 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 fail to understand the value of where you are and who you're around and the people that God has has placed in your life you you are always in this sense that that where you are is never enough the people that you're around are never enough uh, that you always have this desire to to uh, be somewhere else right that you're always having the desire so we're gonna we're gonna by the in the script just combat that this week talk about how you are uh by the grace of god having the power to create something that starts within you but then begins to move into the areas of your life that you feel might be in the might be to a detriment might 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 not be to your liking right now and so i want to show you how to do that through through the scriptures this week and um a lot of the principles that i'm going to share with you are out of a book written by a man by the name of malcolm gladwell called the tipping point and the tipping point is how do you begin to do little things consistently in your own life that begins to mushroom into other areas of your life how do you begin to build what most of us in who love sports are called momentum. How do you begin to build momentum in your own life by you doing a few things consistently over time? And in that, that whole idea of that environment that starts with you begins to invade other people and other circumstances. And so by you doing little things over time, consistently how you can kind of change your reality so there's no need for you to run away all right turn with me this morning in your bibles uh, to psalm 55 verses 6 and 7 as we begin to launch this week uh, psalm 55 6 and 7 this is a testimony of a uh, king called david and um, we're, we're going to talk about this this morning. David says this, 
I said, oh, that I had wings of a dove, I would fly away and be at rest. I would flee far away and stay in the desert. David here, uh, for most of us who even may not even like scriptures, can uh, sympathize or empathize with David here. Uh, life for many of us can, if we're not careful, be coined in a phrase, uh, it's always, if it's not one thing, it's another. And so if you're, if you're not careful, brothers and sisters, you, you will begin to um, believe or, or take thought of your life being one that is constantly over time, constantly never giving you the joy that you believe you deserve. And, and so when you feel like life is only about dealing with hardships, you begin to have this idea that it would be nice to step away from reality and get lost in the fantasies of our own mind. And that's why many of us read books about faraway lands, explore virtual worlds, um, uh, have this idea that we could own that we're we're a different person when we're on vacation. We're we're a different person when when we are ser in the place of being served. Uh, we're a different person. We have different standards uh, for people when we're on vacation than we have for ourselves. Escapism is what I want to talk to the to you this week, or at least it, it's in its basic form is the intentional detachment and distraction from the real world. It, it allows a momentary reprieve from your circumstances, giving you a chance to recharge your batteries before you jump back into the fray. If you, if you, if you like watching television, movies, listening to music, reading books, playing games, even daydreaming, and you've taken place in escapism. It, it, it's completely normal. All of us do it from time to time, playing sports, telling stories, and even eating um, foods from faraway lands can be used to cause our minds to escape. All things considered, brothers and sisters, watching movies, reading books aren't inherently bad for us. And daydreaming can actually be good for the brain. With, without a little bit of idea of escape, escapism, the stresses of everyday life can burn us out faster and faster. Escapism allows us to step away from uh, what we consider to be the trials of life. And when you're feeling overwhelmed, come back to the problem with a fresh mind. When you're going through a rough patch and uh, <laughs> Disappearing into a good book or a lengthy video game can help you deal with the harshness reality in a small, and easy to handle way. I, I don't have a problem with escapism for in little in little portions, but but what I'm I'm coming to have an issue with with a lot of us is the is the desire to uh, over time escape every area of our life that that that. Every area of your life needs to have escapes from that. Not just not just once every so often, but every part of our lives and every day of our lives. We wish we were somewhere else. We wish we were with someone else. Th this is a problem, brothers and sisters, that I believe that I believe the enemy is sunk in, sunk in our hearts to believe that. That our problems, again, what we talked about last week, our problems are out there. And so there, there is where we need to fix all of our problems. I often have conversations with, with clients or, or parishioners that come and comp to complain about how others are treating them. Pastor, you don't know how sister so-and-so is treating me. Or what they say is everyone around here, everyone in church, Everyone in my job, everyone in my neighborhood uh, treats me some kind of way. Sometimes it's a mom and a dad. Sometimes it's, it's husband and wife. Sometimes it's, it's friends and family. 
that that treat you terribly and you can't wait to get away from them so that you can find rest. But what I've discovered, brothers and sisters, is that, uh, write this down real quick, is that oftentimes the trials and the tribulations that you face and your desire to run away from your reality comes as a result of us holding other people to a higher standard than we hold ourselves. Let me slow down, break, break that now. That, 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 that oftentimes the, the, the trouble that we have is that we have higher expectations that other people treat us better than we actually treat ourselves. Now, now I'm not talking about whether or not you're going to treat yourself to a new car or, or treat yourself to a brand new house. I'm not, not really talking about that. I'm, I'm talking about the day-to-day -day way you hold yourself in high regard and expect that because the, of the way that I handle my life, I then implore or create influences so that others can treat me better. Can I, can I, can I clue you into to something? I've talked to someone just this uh, past week, and they were telling me that, that around this area, I'm, I live in the DMV area of, around Washington, D.C., and they said, Pastor, um, what, I've, what I've discovered is that uh, when I go into restaurants, I seem to always get bad service. They, they said, you know, I, I seem to have bad service no matter what restaurant I go to. I seem to be receiving terrible service. And I turned it around and I said, you know what? I've lived in uh, the DMV all my life and I can count on one hand the number of times I have received bad service. I, I, I really can. I can, brothers and sisters, I can count on one hand. How many times I have, and my wife is on here, she, she can attest that me personally, that when I go to restaurants, when I go to place that serve me, I very rarely have bad experiences. Why? Why, why do I have great service when I go places and other people who are in the same area as I have, have, the, have a pattern of bad service? Usually it's because if, and I'm not there, so I don't want to project, but I would surmise that usually you have bad service because usually you go to the restaurant with a bad attitude. And, and because you operate in a bad attitude, you create a bad energy that then projects on the server and you want the server to treat you in a way that is counter to the way you're treating her or him. What I do, because I, I come from a service industry, I know how um, to create e an atmosphere when, I get it, when I'm getting served that the server understands that we're in a relationship. And part of this relationship is on me because I am the only uh, changing piece to the puzzle. The restaurant stays the same. Uh, that person is still the same. They are, they are there to take care of certain booths. But the, but the variable is the people who they serve. And what I, what I assure every server is that they're going to have as good a time with me as I want to have with them. And usually, because I come in with a great attitude, that attitude of mine, whether that person has a good attitude or not, sends, tends to cascade around to them. And at least for my time with them, we normally have a great time and they give me great service. I want, I want to share with you, brothers and sisters, uh, that if you, you tend to only have have a great time when you are in faraway places on vacation, then I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, uh, you need to raise the standard of life for yourself. What I've discovered is that we have very, very high expectations of people who serve us on vacations, in restaurants, in retail establishments, all 
to get us to break away from reality. Let me give an example of what I'm talking about. All of us love vacations when we get a chance to go to a nice uh, five-star hotel or resort. Everyone, everyone loves this. Most of us, if not all of us, have experienced um, hotels. And one of the things that hotels do that uh, try to make every day that you spend with them magnificent is that when you leave every day, by the time you return, your bed and your room is made back up. Anybody can attest to that? Put a one in the chat if that's your experience. And you love that. You love the fact that you can leave your room a mess. But when you come back, that room is made up. In fact, hear me, hear, let me know if this is you, Tangy. That if it is not made up, you are disappointed. And somebody's going to have to answer to it. Because of how you feel when that bed is made up and that room is clean, when you come back after day of riding on games or doing whatever you do or on, um, on vacation, when you come back to your hotel room, there is an expectation that you want that room to make you feel good again. But here's what I discovered. Only about half of us in America clean up our own rooms when we leave in the morning. Now, here's the truth, is that we would have the same feeling when we came back into our homes. Most of us live in nice homes. We have our, have our rooms deco with the decor that we like. Uh, we have decent mass mattresses that we all sleep on. And yet, only about half of us clean up our own rooms, make up our own beds, when in fact, when we got home that evening, we would have the same feeling if we walked into our rooms and they were made up. Let me give you another illustration. If you've ever rented a car, uh, you know that rental cars normally are vacuumed by the time you get them, and they smell nice, right? They, they know that when they rent you a car, that your expectation is, is that you're going to be driving in a clean car that smells nice. And your expectation is if you get in one that is not clean, you're giving that car back. However, would it surprise you to know that only about 14% of Americans clean their own cars at least once a month? Would it, would it be surprising to you, brothers and sisters, that we, we only, we have an expectation every day, but we don't have that expectation on ourselves. We only have an expectation of those we pay money to to make us feel better. Yet, brothers and sisters, we do not have an expectation for us to treat ourselves better every day. We pay others to make us feel better, but we can make ourselves feel better free. David in Psalm 55 is going through a tough time. Uh, most theologians say that this is the time when he is exiled. He is either talking to God in a prayer about a friend who has betrayed him or his son Absalom who has uh, caused him to be in exile away from his throne and in a in a form of, of total betrayal. David says, oh, that if I had wings like a dove, I would fly away and be at rest. I would flee far away and stay in a desert. David is, is, is letting us know that his reality is not what he wants. And so he, he intends, at least he wishes, that he could run away. 
But the problem that I have with David is David is, in my estimation, doing a little reaping what he sowed. You see, David himself, throughout his life, had an occasion to over and over again experience betrayal, um, selfishness on his own side. You know the story of Bathsheba and him causing his 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 servant, his friend Uriah, to be to be killed. But David continuously had a problem with women, and um, so much so that when David got old, the the way that his his people knew about his proclivity for women that that David they decided that be, when David got old and nothing else would would satisfy David they they decided to find a pretty girl to slide into the bed with David and they said when David did not react to this young lady they concluded that David was dead my brothers and sisters, I'd like to share with you that there, there are things that you can do in your reality that causes you to enjoy your reality a lot better and begin, as a, tip, as a tipping point book shares, begin to cascade and set a momentum for the rest of your life. Here's what I want to give you five things I think happen when you start to treat yourself better. When you start to take little things, do little things consistently and start to feel like that that home, that reality, that your marriage, that your situation, that your kids, uh, that your relationships, that that the things that you are experiencing right now and going through, that that in fact, they're not always bad and that that you don't always need to to run away to Bora Bora to Bahamas. And have you ever talked to people who who will go to the vacation? And they'll say, uh, they'll say, I did not want to leave. I, I, I just didn't want to leave. <laughs> Usually it's because you, you, you love the fantasy of, of, of a way instead of doing little things to change your own realities at home. So, so let me give you five things I think happens when you start to invest in yourself. When you start to do little things, clean your own car, clean your bathroom, not, not the bathroom that, that, not the powder room that the guests see. I'm talking about the bathroom that you, that you experience, that you stay with, that you deal with. Clean your own room. Make up your own bed. Clean your own car. Vacuum your own car out. You know, do do the little things that 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 you want to be done to a, to you as a customer. Well, treat yourself that way. Here, here's what will happen, and I believe that you you and I will begin to see things operate differently in our lives, or at least we would have a different experience about our reality. Number one, um, you will change how you feel about yourself. You won't only see yourself as the receiver of good things, but you'll also receive, uh, start to see yourself as the contributor, maybe even the initiator of good things happening in your life. You're not just sitting back waiting for people to treat you a certain way. No, you're, 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 you're treating yourself in a way that begins to send the message to other people. Have you ever gone to somebody's house and um, you see when you walk in their house that all of their shoes are kind of uh, stacked in a place? They're giving you the impression that they don't walk on their carpets, right? They're, they're sending you a message, not by what they want you to do, but what, by what they are all doing. They, they, they're, and so you begin to ask, should, should I take off my shoes? Because they have created an environment that says that they don't walk on their own carpets, right? Most of us walk on our own carpets and then get mad when other people, when other people do. You will begin to feel good about yourself and how you feel about yourself when you start to take little, little things to say, 
I'm going, I'm going to take care of myself. I'm not talking about big things. I'm not talking about go to the spa, buy myself a purse. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm talking about cleaning the purse that you already have. Just cleaning it out, organizing it. All right. Number two. What you will discover is your right now in present productivity will increase. That things will be, you will go further faster when you start to take little steps to stop daydreaming about your next vacation and you start thinking about creating a Shangri-La in your own space. Yeah. That, that, that you can have little, like, wonderful realities in your own space. I, I guarantee you, do this for me, if you, even if you don't, you don't do this on a regular. Make up your bed today before you go to work. Make up your own bed. Even if you're going in your office and you're working from remote, just make up your bed, clean your own space, and close the door. I guarantee you when you come back later on that day, you will feel so much better. You will almost feel like you are in a hotel. You will almost get that same, that, that same rush. That's like, oh my God, that's so nice. All right. Your productivity will increase. You will do things faster with more motivation when you begin to look out for yourself. When you begin to have an expectation of yourself that is as great or greater than the, those you have for others. All right. Number three, your personal standards, standards will rise. Yeah, it really will. That you will understand that, that the, the expectations that I have for myself will stand up. That, that I, I, I recoil when people, when people curse at me. You know why? Because I don't curse at me. People will get a sense as, as to how to treat me because they will know how I treat me. You, you won't dirt up my car because you won't walk in my car and see that I don't dirt up my car. And even if those, and tip, the tipping point will say, even if they do, if you clean it up immediately, over and over again, you will send a message that this is not, I'm I, that this is not the environment where you are just going to mess up my place. That as soon as they mess it up, you clean it up. What you will discover is over time, your standards will rise. That's number three. Number four, you will develop more um, of your own potential. You will understand that you within yourself have the ability to put a, put a smile on your own face. You will be surprised as, as to how often you can make yourself laugh. You, you, you will stop having to pay thousands and thousands of dollars for people to make you feel good about you. You will understand that you have the potential to do little things to make yourself happy. If, if, if you're putting pressure on your spouse or your boyfriend or the potential of your girlfriend to make yourself happy, that's too much pressure on other people. You have the potential. Take yourself to the movies. Buy yourself a nice uh, uh, thing of, of cologne. Give yourself some flowers. Set precedence in your life of your ability to put a smile on you. I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. You can put a smile on your own face. Don't leave that up to anybody else. All right. Those, I don't only have four things to give you. So that's what we're going to talk about this week. We're going to talk about how do you begin to create this reality that starts to uh, blossom right where you are, right, right where you are. I think if David had had spent less time wandering, um, uh, hurting other people, not taking care of his own business, not taking care of his own family, then he would have set himself up so that he wouldn't need to fly away. But if you create mess in your own life, you're going to attract mess. 
if, if you if you are weird acting and strange acting about how you treat yourself, if if you allow people to, I don't, I don't want to say it that way. People take advantage of people who are take advantage of. And I don't mean you're getting nasty at me. I'm saying if if you are well groomed and look out for yourself and treat yourself nice and speak well of yourself and because if I speak well of myself, I'm gonna speak well of you and I'm and I'm gonna greet you um, with a warm regard. I'm gonna walk around with a smile on my own face. You will attract that back to you. You will testify. I'm a testimony. And so this week, we're going to dive into the, the things you can do in your own home, in your own car, in your own job, with your own family, in your own friends that you can do to create a tipping point that will change the trajectory of the place you call reality. All right. That's where we'll go this week. Invite your friends, all, all of your friends who, who spend all of their money on vacations and they can't wait to get away. Um, they can't wait to get away. Yeah. I, I love vacation. I don't mind. Take a vacation. But, but even if you go away on vacation two weeks of a year, you got to spend 50 of those weeks at, in reality. Right? Why don't we do a better job of creating the majority of the time that we have to spend away from the Bahamas, Jamaica, wherever you like to go, and start bringing a little Jamaica home. All right, that's right. Father, thank you for the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. And so God, I, I pray now that you would open our eyes that we may be able to see that there is more with us than against us. God, cause your grace to explode in our lives that that this doubt and this this need to get away fly away look away that we are, that we're only smiling that we're only laughing when we're away or we're we're in someone else's car or we're we're driving we're eating someone else's food no no, no god help us to pull in the reins of the joy that you have provided for us in our now bless you lord we thank you, Lord, for you said that we would have perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. So, God, uh, help us to enjoy our now, to help us to enjoy the space that we're in, um, help us to enjoy the, the place that we, we call home, help us to, to, to redeem the time and to, um, to wake up every morning with, with joy, with the joy of the Lord in our hearts. Uh, cause us to to take your word of God and let us let it let it become a scalpel into our heart, uh, um, to, removing God, cutting between uh, the bone and the marrow, the, uh, the 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 intent of the heart. God, show us your your will and your way, so God that we may be able to enjoy this life and have it more abundantly. Thank you, Lord. We 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 leave ourselves open and vulnerable to the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us into truth so that we will be the better. I've, I've come against the spirit of stubbornness, God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, um, of complacency, God, of um, God. I, I pray, God, that you would use the Holy Spirit to convict us and to challenge, challenge us by your grace and, 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 and full, and in some people's eyes, transform our minds uh, to believe the good that we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Do it for your glory, Lord, that that your people's countenance will reflect your grace in our lives, that that our faces would show up and uh, reflect the goodness that you've given us now. Thank you, Lord, for all of your goodness towards us. And we'll be careful to give your name the praise. It is in Christ's name we pray and we thank you and God's people say together. Let it be so in my life. God bless you, brothers and sisters. It's it's time. It's time. We love you. Have a great day in the Lord. We'll see you tomorrow morning if it's the Lord's will. Bye-bye.